Hello and welcome back to our channel Forensic Science Public Desk India and this is a topic on regional injuries. This is lecture 13 Forensic Medicine uses in at Forensic Science. Let us proceed into the topic. Introduction. Regional injuries comprises of injuries to various anatomical regions of the body having medical legal significance and includes injuries to the head, neck, spine and spinal cord, chest, abdomen, limb bones and joints. The correct interpretation of these injuries is of vital importance in reconstruction of the events. So though it is very easily specified in this particular sentence that there are various parts which are, which are involved. These injuries may not be easily observable or we can also say it is pathophysiological kind of thing inside the body which happens due to kind of external action happening on our human body. So such kind of uh, things which are happening and this particular injuries, regional injuries inside the body, these are causing the death. So sometimes by identifying this particular regional injuries, either it can be the, in the limbs or in the brain or in the chest or abdominal part, wherever it is, it is going to become a vital reason for a cause of death. So let's learn about the regional injuries. So first we are going to learn about head injuries and its classification. Head injuries are most complicated and very tough enough to understand the concepts and the pathology is also very complicated to understand and while we are seeing the injuries, how it happened actually by seeing the impact of the particular external force onto the body, we cannot easily predict or interpret whether that would be the cause or any other cause is there. So such kind of confusions will be coming when we are dealing with head injuries. So let's classify that depending on involvement of dura matter, closed head injury means wherein dura matter is intact and open head injury means wherein dura matter is torn. So what is a dura matter? Dura matter is a very thin layer just below the skull. Okay. So this particular thin layer is cutted into four, dissected into four parts while we are doing the autopsy to take out the brain. So remember the autopsy part. Okay. So that dura matter depending on that we can classify it into closed and open. Then when it is coming to gross anatomical structures of head injuries, we can divide it into scalp injuries that means the only head part where the hair is there, scalp hair is there. So that part is there and uh, facial injuries can be seen where eyes, nostrils, nose, lips, mouth, maxilla, mandible, etc., teeth, all these things will be involved. Then skull injuries will be generally dealing with the if fractures which are caused to the skull and cranial cavity. Then we can also discuss about injuries to meninges that means just the layer of dura matter, arachnoid matter or any other layer just below the skull. And then we can see about the brain injuries that is cerebral or brain stem will be coming into the brain injuries. So let us proceed further also. Scalp injuries, this is the first category of our head injuries. So first we have to understand what is scalp. So the first image which you are seeing here is the scalp and uh, the first is epidermis, dermis and uh, subcutaneous tissue which is present all these three layers are belonging to the skin. So anything happens in the level of subcutaneous layer where the blood vessels will be there, the particular damage of the blood vessels will occur and if the incise wound or laceration is occurring till the level of subcutaneous layer again you can see the bleeding as well. So after that we are having superficial fissure and then we are having epicranial aponeurosis and loose connective tissue is there, then pericranium is there, then after that you are going to see the skull diploid. Okay? We can understand what is meaning of diploid later. So this particular layers are damaged due to the external force, then we can call it as scalp, scalp injuries. So okay, then uh, the abrasion, is it possible to see abrasions to the head? Yes, in the cases of uh, traffic accidents or in the cases of rail accidents, and factory industrial accidents we can see the abrasions but most of the abrasions which are going to occur onto the scalp are being protected by the hair. So if the person is having very good hair then the particular abrasions are not occurring on the scalp. If he is not having the hair obviously you can expect some abrasions or if any abrasion is occurred and you want to observe what is the pattern of the abrasion then you have to shave the head that means remove the hair. Then contusion, what is the contusion? It is nothing but the whatever blood vessels which are present at the level of subcutaneous layer will be bleeding out and that blood is not coming outside. Okay. 
then it will be visible as a red spot or bluish or green greenish spot onto the forehead or onto the any part of our head if it is protected with hair again it will be not visible in some cases we can divide the condition into two types one is black eye and other is spectacle hematoma that means whatever the injury which is occurring near the forehead okay it is not onto the middle scalp or back side near the occipital it is inside to the frontal in the frontal lobes if anything has gone wrong some fracture is there some extra force is applied or some contusion is gone okay at that time what will happen the blood whatever it is flowing from the frontal side side of the injury that will be passing into the eye cavities okay you can see black eye like that this is the condition due to the bleeding into the soft tissue around the eye owing to the blunt trauma okay so that particular pressure is applied and blood is coming into the eye and you can also see spectacle hematoma this is a condition in which the blood is collected in the soft tissue around the eyes due to the fracture of base of the skull anterior cranial fossa fracture we call it as okay so this fracture whatever in the graphic image which you are seeing here that is the anterior fracture of the particular cranium then this is going to cause the particular image which you are seeing the below one this is called as spectacle hematoma then last one is laceration where you can see the image here the severe la laceration can be observed whenever the laceration or incision or any kind of thing is occurring onto the face or the cranium or onto the skull part then uh, there is a heavy bleeding due to the particular face part is a uh, highly vascular in nature which will be pumping lot of blood reverse to the gravitational pull that's why we can see lot of bleeding in the face part when any injury occurs so this particular thing is laceration facial injuries under facial injuries we can understand the injuries which are occurring to eyes nose ears lips teeth facial bones etc so if you are seeing about the eyes lacerated wounds of eyes can be seen across the eye or inside the eyes clara part is getting lacerated and permanent injury to cornea iris or lens will be causing the blindness and vitreous hemorrhage that means inside bleeding of an eye so that can be observed that is the first image which is representing the vitreous hemorrhage detachment of retina can be seen where the retina layer is getting detached from the choroid or scleral layer and sometimes this particular retinal layer may get break so that is called as the rupture of retina and traumatic cataract can also be seen so cataract is a natural phenomenon which is occurring in the old persons but if any traumatic or injury is occurring on to the eye back side of the eye so inside the eye the lens whatever are there for the eye are getting damaged so the traumatic cataract can be seen in that case penetration penetrating wounds or penetrating injuries to the eye or gouging out the eyes by the finger at the time it can be fatal and this may be setting up meningitis and other injuries like nose so in the nose you can see commonest thing being nose is been cut in off and left nostril may get injured in indian females if the nose ring or stud is snatched and sharp pointed objects cause penetrating wound rarely concealed puncture wound could be through the nostril and blow on the nose or giving any kind of injury to the nose the sinuses which are present on the above the nose will be getting a, a compromised and the, the leakage will occur from the sinuses and you can see injuries to ears a blow can cause rupture of tympanum resulting in permanent deafness severe blow can cause injury to the labyrinth so these are the parts of the ears very crucial parts and bleeding can also be seen from the ear if any damage occurs inside the brain okay then injuries to lips a blunt force trauma such as a blow with the fist or any blunt weapon can result into con contusions or lacerations sometimes lips may, may get cutted off as well so then we can see teeth so uh, dislocation fracture of teeth with bleeding from sockets and contusion or laceration to the gums can be seen for the teeth part and anything which is related to teeth then we can do the x-ray and the radiographs can be taken for the analysis then we can see the injuries to the facial bones so most of the injuries are corollary in nature and uh, uh, due to the blunt force attack or due to the traffic accident rail accident or falling from uh, the buildings have heights etc will be related to this facial bones like the nasal bones you can see ethmoid bones near the eyes maxilla uh, above the mouth 
and the malar bones mandible are also involved in the facial bones so whatever it is the injuries which are causing blindness deafness or any kind of severe injuries inside the brain or com completely it is deforming our appearance or senses then it will be considered as grievous hurt coming under 320 section ipc skull injuries so skull is a diploid bone having outer table and inner table so outer label as you can see refer in the image a and uh, it is thick and a very stronger bone underneath that we are having spongy bone which is also often called as marrow and uh, the underneath to the spongy bone we can see inner table so the bone which is there spongy bone that is the elastic so that's why we call it as diploy bone okay so this particular diploy bone when the force is applied onto this the first outer table and spongy bone you are going to get elasticized and after that if more pressure is applied or more force is applied the bone will break so ultimately the outer table will break which is causing to the linear fracture so can we sequence the events of this particular fracture yes by following the particular pupes rule so this may be determined by pupes rule according to this a later fracture does not cross a pre existing fracture line but terminates on reaching the fracture line of the earlier fracture so that is what it is applied here and this same pupes rule is applied on to the glass fractures as well so you can understand this particular thing then classification of skull fractures we can divide it into two types that is fracture of the vault of the skull that is the top part of the skull and fracture of the base of the skull so generally again we can divide the fractures into two types depends on the violence so if it is the direct violence as like you seeing in the left side image that is the direct violence where the hammer is used to cause the injury by putting certain force so what kind of force is required as like we have learnt in wound ballistics kinetic energy is equal to half of mass and twice of the velocity so this particular formula is applied to understand the force energy which is applied so that force is applied onto the bone and you can see the fracture is occurring on that so this is a direct force then the fracture which is occurring onto the base skull generally are occurred due to indirect force or indirect violence that means a person falling from the building and he is landing onto the ground on his buttocks or onto the knees then lot of pressure will be applied onto the skull base bearing all the body so skull base fractures can be observed in that case so that is the indirect particular fracture classification of skull fractures we can see various skull fractures are there where fissured fracture means this is a linear fracture involving only outer and inner layer of the particular skull bone this both layers will be getting damaged and a single line fracture will be there this is called also called as crack fractures when it occurs around the foramen magnum then it will be called as ring fracture so when this particular fracture is occurring it is a highly uh, little complicated actually to identify or to uh, where it is there when the person is alive we cannot uh, do the autopsy right so in that particular conditions this fracture cannot be easily identified in the x rays as well but when this scanning ct scanning or mri scanning is done at that particular stages if it is uh, overcoming one layer to another layer then we can easily identify this so then we can also see depressed fracture this is a fracture wherein the fractured bone fragment is driven inwards for some distance below the rest of the adjacent skull so contour and it may correspond in shape size etc to that of causative weapon so this that is why it is also called as the striking surface or signature fracture so which will give the clues regarding the causative weapon so like the hammer or stick stone wrench all these things are used then we can see the depression fracture that is the third image here so this will be also damaging the inner part so comminuted fracture can be seen the word comminuted literally means reduced or small pieces or particles this fracture wherein the bone is broken broken into several pieces of different sizes whenever the fracture fragments are not displaced it gives stellar appearance then 
usually it occurs as a complication of depressed fracture both are almost similar but comminuted fracture will be more complicated comparing to the depressed one then stellate fracture this is the comminuted fracture with future fracture fragments radiating from it and held intact the cause are the same with the comminuted fracture okay then a mosaic fracture can be seen this is a non depressed commuted fracture where the fractured site appears in the form of several fissures and forming spider web or cob web or mosaic in pattern so that is also called as mosaic pattern fracture and it will be giving degree of depression minimal and absent here then elevated fractures can also be seen in this fracture wherein one end of the fractured fragment is elevated above the surface of the skull while the other end may dip down into the cranial cavity and injure the dura mater of the brain directly a blow from moderately heavy sharp edged in a weapon like axe will be causing this elevated fractures then diastatic fractures can be seen which are occurring through the sutures so this is a fracture occurring along the skull sutures and occurs in children and young persons most generally then gutter fractures can be seen in this fracture wherein the thickness of the particular skull bone is affected leading to irregular depressed fracture of inner table at times may be only longitudinal depression of outer table alone without any loss of bone underneath a glancing bullet wound causes the fracture so this is a gutter fracture then we can also see pond fracture or indented fracture it is a simple dent in the skull which results from a obstetric forceps blade or blow from blunt object forcible impact against some protruding object so when the bony structure is protruding outside this particular structure is been handled by some other blunt object then this pond fractures can be seen so basically due to the elasticity of the skull and especially likely to occur in the infants actually the inner table of the skull here is usually intact however the fissure bone fractures may be seen around the periphery of the dent so then we can also see perforating fracture or punctured fracture we cannot call it as or hole can be seen in this fracture fracture this is a fracture wherein the thickness of the skull is affected leading to irregular depression fracture of inner table at times there may be only longitudinal depression of outer table alone may be observed without any loss of bone integrity underneath so the glancing bullet is one more common cause of this particular fracture then cut fracture we can see a heavy cutting weapon can cause straight chops of the skull involving either the outer table alone or sometimes affecting both the tables this is most deadly type of out, uh, fracture called as cut fracture then we can see combined fracture this is a fracture wherein this there is a combination of more than one all mentioned above so like this we can see various fractures which are there and the depictions which are there the bottom image bottom last image is a ring fracture occurring near the foramen magnum and we can see depression fracture on the left side and we can also see the linear fractures fissures perforating fractures comminuted fractures and also diastasis along its with suture injury to meninges meninges means we are having three different layers under the skull so first layer we can discuss about is the dura mater and you can see arcinoid mater and the pia mater so dura mater is a little thick compared to other two layers dura mater is strong gray bluish connective tissue membrane and firmly attached to the skull and this particular thing is penetrated by bridging veins called as emissary veins along the vertex and we can see the arcinoid matter it is thin vascular mesh work like mesh work means like you can see a mesh like connected tissues connected uh, uh, vesicular network will be there and under the dura okay, the sheets of the arcinoid follows the uh, vessels inside the brain as they penetrate into the neural surface this vessels and the thin strands of connective tissue anchor the brain with subarcinoid space so this is how the two layers are arranged and we can see the pia mater it is not so truly membrane but surface network of glial fibers 
that are inseparable from the underneath particular things. So when the structure is damaged, the first particular fracture is occurring and it is damaging any meningeal arteries as you can see in the first image A. If it is getting damaged due to the fracture, the particular bleeding will occur and hematoma can be seen that is the outer dural. Okay? So that will be called as extra dural hematoma and if the injury is occurring to the bridging veins as like you see the image in below. So that is a, a particular ruptured bridging vein which is getting damaged and bleeding will occur. This particular uh, bleeding will be occurring between the dura and the pia matter in the arcinoid layer. So at that time the bleeding can be seen in that particular layer which is little less. So this particular injuries to the meningitis can also be occurring which will be creating a very uh, severe hematoma and creating the cranial pressure, creating the uh, cerebral pressure inside the particular cranial cavity and if it is increasing more and more the pressure will be increased which will be more fatal. Brain injuries, so it is also called as traumatic brain injury. At the time of head injury only three types of brain damages are generally seen. One is diffuse neuronal injury, contusion, laceration can occur alone or in the combination. Odema of brain, intracerebral hemorrhage etc are secondary phenomena which will be occurring even though they occur soon or some, some time after the injury. So brain injuries or traumatic origin they are caused due to the external forces which are acting on to the brain. So in this particular injuries the cerebral part or the uh, between the middle cerebral part and ventricular part are generally damaged. So though the force is applied onto the brain or some other part of our body there are certain fractures and certain damages which are occurring to the brain which is the crucial part. So why it is occurring? So there are various theories which are being drawn on so on traumatic brain theory. So biomechanic explores the mechanical phenomenon that causes initial craniocerebral lesions and thus represents starting point of overall understanding of traumatic brain injuries. So first theory you can see linear acceleration theory and second one you can see Holborn's hypothesis and later on you can see stereotactical theory. So among these three theories we have to basically understand stereotactical theory which is actually the most reliable one. So anyhow those are various mechanisms coming to the injuries part we can see accelerating injuries. So accelerating injuries when a moving object hits the head which is static in nature this skull pick up the momentum first and hits the brain. So first getting a skull will get damaged then the brain will get damaged which still at rest okay yet to pick up the moment and fraction of seconds later this is called as accelerating injury a blow on head with hockey rod or any iron rod will be a example for accelerating injury decelerating injury means when a non moving object suddenly arrests the brain in motion the skull loses its momentum much prior to the brain like the second image you can see here image b so this is called as decelerating injury. The head of the person riding a scooter, motorcycle sustains head collision with roadway pole or tree etc on the road will be giving the decelerating injury. So shear strain rotational injury is the another type. This is due to the side to side rotational movement of the head which makes the brain to get jolted and the sharp edges of the temporal attachments in the interior of the skull and on the bone buttresses produces bones by the base of the skull and get injured. So this particular is due to the particular twisting of the brain inside it, inside the cranial cavity. Then we can see two other injuries that is scope injury, quadrupocope injury. So here the injury to the skull and the brain occurs both together at the site of impact. This is more common when the blunt force blows the head like the first example. And the quadrocope means here the injury to the skull and the brain occurs on the opposite side. So as the particular force is applied on the back side as in the second image, the skull is getting fractured on the front side due to the fracture and again the particular pressure is onto the back side, onto the gravitational pull side. Then again damage of the frontal lobe is generally seen. So temporal and frontal contusions are generally seen which will be again giving the spectacular hematoma to the person. 
other brain injuries first one cerebral concussion so what are concussions generally cerebral concussion is a condition wherein there is a reversible or irreversible derangement of neuronal activity without any demonstrable organic lesion in the brain so in this particular condition there is no bleeding there is no uh, appearance of something inside the brain but the person will going into the unconscious state so this is because of the external force which is applied so why this is occurring without any appearance of injury how this is going to occur because the neurons are very small in size these are very uh, cellular in level in a tissue of brain so the force whatever it is there applied from outside it is going to be taken up by the skull then to the brain from the brain the cerebrum part or any other brain part will be taking the pressure waves and also the relative movements sudden movements and it will be damaging the neuronal activity but not the neurons so this particular concept is given in stereotactical theory so that is what giving us a status of what is the brain condition there are certain other conditions called as reversible concussions irreversible concussion means the person is completely unconscious he is going into the coma because heavy damage of the neurons but when it is uh, saying about reversible concussions we have to understand few other term terminologies like post concussion syndrome where the person will be irritated it will be having headache dizziness agitation emotional problems or nervousness will be there epilepsy can also be observed and uh, there are certain symptoms which will be almost resembling the drunken person but there are certain differences the person who is suffering from concussion he will be not having the alcohol smell and the person who is suffering from concussion he will, his uh, uh, blood pressure will be irregular and it will be abnormal and whatever he is there he will be not abusive that means the drunken person will be he will be abusive and he will be uncooperative with the police but if it is coming to the concussion case he will be very patient quiet curled up and he will be suffering from certain kind of irritation from the head part so these are the symptoms and signs which a police officer should remember while dealing with the person who is unconscious or dealing with a concussion then this particular pressure or this particular external force is coming from the cerebral part to the brain stem part then there are certain other injuries which are going to occur like diffuse neuronal injury that means damage of the nerve fibers or the neurons which are situated at the part of the brain stem and diffuse axonal injuries are another type of injuries where the axonal parts of the neurons will be getting damaged and this particular axonal parts will be unable to send or receive any kind of information from the brain or to the peripheral parts so this is in the diffuse in nature that's why the diffuse word is used here so the microscopic examination can be done or to the diffuse axonal injury where the injury occurred after 12 hours only we are going to identify the axonal damage in the form of uh, the retraction balls so you can see the image of uh, microscopic examination that is the retraction balls because of the axonal damage in the electron microscope so staining can be done abp staining and e, h and e staining can be done to observe those axons then we can also see certain other cerebral injuries like cerebral contusion in which the bruising of cerebral tissue will be occurring so there may not there may not be particular thing like uh, it is because of the scalp or the skull injury which is occurring outside and uh, uh, normal injuries as like we have seen earlier acceleration deceleration injuries absorption of shock penetrating injuries are general causes for the cerebral contusions only the swelling of the internal cerebral tissue will be there cerebral laceration means tearing of the cerebral tissue and uh, usually found with a cerebral contusion or of several degrees then we can see cerebral irritation where includes a peculiar set of symptoms that may be follow cerebral concussion victim lies curled up in the bed and he will be hiding and he will be uh, unconscious he will be sensitive to the light etc this particular symptoms can be seen and cerebral compression means a clinical condition due to increased intracranial pressure which disturbs the function of the brain so that can be due to the hemorrhages or injuries to the meningitis so this particular injuries will be increasing the cranial pressure that will be called as cerebral compression that means which is occurring inside the cerebrum
hemorrhages simply hemorrhages we can understand by saying it is the internal bleeding of certain organ so here our organ is the brain so intracranial hemorrhage means inside the brain the bleeding is occurring so again it can be understood in two parts that is intraaxial hemorrhages where intracerebral hemorrhage will be occurring that is inside the cerebrum or inside the ventricular region of the brain the bleeding will occur that will be coming into intraaxial hemorrhage and when it is saying about the extraaxial hemorrhages the extradural hemorrhage subdural hemorrhage and subarachnoid hemorrhage can be seen extradural means above the dural layer you will be seeing the hemorrhage that means complete layer will be uh, filled with the hemorrhage and uh, coming to subdural it is between the dural layer and arachnoid layer and subarachnoid means in the arachnoid space the hemorrhage can be seen so all the images on the left side will be giving us the intracranial hemorrhages so easily easily you can understand by seeing the appearance the bleeding will be red color and it can be observed intracerebral hemorrhage which is occurring inside the cerebrum where by dividing or by dissecting the brain into two parts we can see this particular hemorrhages intraventricular hemorrhage can be seen when you are completing the cut you are completing the dissection of the brain into two hemispheres in the bottom side you will be seeing this particular hemorrhage and pontine hemorrhage means near the brain stem near the pons and near the medulla you can see certain hemorrhages so that means the images of h and g you, are, you can easily say that is the pontine hemorrhage and the cerebral oedema is because of heavy bleeding and it is causing a Uh, the oedema that is increasing of the pressure inside the brain due to high leakage of the csf into the brain cavity or cranial cavity so these are the hemorrhages which can be seen in the brain injuries so this is the part of head injuries only and we are going to understand further injuries regional injuries uh, related to spine spinal cord limbs abdominal part chest part thoracic part etc also so thank you for watching this video i hope you have understood the topic